Uh, we're all trying to figure out how I can work a message into, I've got friends in low places. <laughs> I think we can do that. I just have to think about how I can work that into my message. Give me a week or two to figure that out, all right? You know, I love your songs about dreams. And uh, when I first came into Unity, I don't know how long you've all been in Unity, but when I first entered into Unity, it was so much heavy on the metaphysics. And every Sunday was like a motivational speaker, you know. You can achieve your dreams. If you want something, you can have it. Just speak the word of it. Know it's yours. Claim it. Receive it. And every Sunday was like that. And I don't know about you, but the older I get, I'm kind of done with goals and visions, you know. It's not that, not that I don't want, you know, maybe a few more things, but I've accomplished the things that are important to me. And I don't ask for much in life. I have a career I love. Living in a place I want to live, what more could we ask here in Green Valley, huh? Is this a wonderful place to be doing what I love? We have a simple life, a pretty modest home, but I got a view of the mountain. What more could I want, huh? Two wonderful sons, perfect husband. <laughs> I might be in the way. Yeah, give me a hand, all right? <laughs> not easy being the minister's spouse, let me tell you. My health is good and life is good, and most of that has come about through the power of prayer, using my imagination and speaking the word of all those things I desire in life. But the older I get, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, more, I'm pretty satisfied with my life right now. And I've taken on more of a global vision now for the world. You know, expanding, I think it's time for all of us to go more global. We don't need more things in our life. We were, most of us were born in that 60s generation where we came to shift the consciousness of the planet. And all the great music from the 60s, did it get any better than our music? <laughs> what the world needs more is love. John Lennon's Imagine, it just goes on and on, awakening the world to our oneness, to peace and harmony. Maybe we need to go back to uh, wearing flowers in our hair and a little more of that. <laughs> I don't know what's going to shift the world, but I'm open to ideas. <laughs> don't tell the village I said that. We have a visitor. We have a visitor today. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not always like this. <laughs> She's clapping her hands. She won't have this way. <laughs> I think that's why the older I get, I try to practice the more mystical side rather than the metaphysical side. I think we've tried all the solutions to fixing the world and nothing seems to be working. So we have to go to those mystical practices, knowing your union with God, knowing your union with everyone, the power of love and holding that vision for an awakened planet where we can finally rise up to that higher way of being. You know, unity has always been a sort of a peaceful organization and it doesn't do a lot of spiritual activism. And often people say, why aren't you speaking out more, taking a stand, doing more? And the position that the Unity Worldwide Movement has is we want to continue to unite people rather than divide people. And so it, some days it seems like it's not enough, but again, it seems like nothing we're doing out there is working, but there is power in vision power in using our imagination to create that vision. And so the whole Unity Worldwide Movement has dedicated the year 2018 to imagination, to all of us imagining that better world. And when I say imagination, anybody here when you were in school, did your teachers ever tell you, quit daydreaming and get to work? Did they ever tell you that? I'm sure a lot of people have been told that. We're not talking about daydreaming. We're talking about the power of imagination and envisioning what we want to manifest in this world. And I think nothing said it more like a fortune cookie. I, years ago, I had the best fortune cookie ever. And it simply said, reality is for those who lack imagination. And I have hung on to that fortune cookie. Reality is for those who lack imagination. Surely we can come up with something better than what's going on today. Imagination is one of the 12 powers of the Christ. And we know that what we imagine, we bring into our lives. That's how I ended up here in Arizona. That's how I found my hubby. That's how I've done anything in my life. I've imagined it first. Even Albert Einstein, of all people, 
said imagination is more important than knowledge. Can you believe that? Albert Einstein, imagination is more important than knowledge. Wow. Charles Fillmore, who wrote the book about the 12 powers of the Christ, said everything that is manifest was first a picture, a mental picture, and was brought into expression by the forming power of imagination. In other words, it's the power that when we realize its importance, it shapes the very substance around us into form. A lot of power. Charles Fillmore, most of you know, you know, we all know Charles was married to Myrtle. Did you all know he had a second wife? This isn't a joke, he really did. And, but it, it's going to cost you a cup of coffee and a lunch to hear the whole story, all right? I'm only going to tell you a little bit of it today. Uh, but his second wife was Cora Fillmore, and she had been his secretary for many years. And after Myrtle died, you know, sometime later in a respectable time, he ended up marrying Cora. And the people at the village were outraged because they had Myrtle as this saint, and they did not ever want anyone to replace <coughs> Myrtle Fillmore. I think they worshipped the person rather than the message that she actually taught. Anyway, buy me a cup of coffee and I'll tell you the whole story. Okay? <laughs> but for now, Akora wrote a wonderful book. She's the one who helped compile a lot of Charles Fillmore's classes into books. So without Cora, we might not have all those books. Anyway, she wrote a book called Christ Enthroned in Man, and she too talked about imagination. She said, divine imagination is the chisel we wield in molding the paradise of our inner thought kingdoms. In other words, like a sculpture, we chisel that marble with our imagination until our world reflects it. Powerful stuff. One of the 12 powers of the Christ. The apostle that goes with imagination is Bartholomew, because before Jesus met him, he had a vision of him. Again, vision, imagination, all from that same place. And the place in the body where we focus on imagination is the third eye, or the pituitary gland. And we use that power now collectively to build a global vision of a more awakened planet. Each of us acting as our own tuning fork by tuning like we did today, coming together in that higher vibration of love so that we can send that vibration out into the world. And some days it looks like we're standing around doing nothing. And people say, why aren't you doing more? Well, we are. We're being that tuning fork for the world. We're sending that vibration out. You know, last week I talked about this world just being an illusionary dream. And one of the things I forgot to say is the good news about this being nothing but an illusionary dream is if it's a dream, we can change it. If it were real, it would be eternal and everlasting, and we wouldn't be able to change it. But because it's a dream, we have the power to change it collectively. Someone once said, imagination lays the tracks for the reality train to follow. Imagination lays the tracks for the reality train to follow. So what kind of tracks are you laying? I know I hate to admit it, maybe I'm the only one here, but my imagination in the past sometimes has gotten me on the wrong train, let me tell you. I've been on some wild train rides, and my imagination took me there. So the first thing we have to do to lay those tracks is to doubt the reality of this dream. Isn't that interesting? This is a Zen teaching. A Zen teaching is we have to doubt the reality of this dream. Now let me read you what they say. The capacity to doubt is one of the greatest blessings to humanity. The religions of the world have been enemies of the world because they've been cutting the very roots of doubt and there is a reason why they've been doing that because they want people to believe in certain illusions that they've been preaching. Doubt is a good thing. Why have people like Buddha been so insistent that the whole existence, except your greater self, is made of the same stuff as dreams are made of? Begin to doubt the dream. Doubt the reality, and then you know you can change it, that we have that power. That's how we fell, the fall, we fell into the lie of separation, the biggest lie we ever didn't doubt, that there is actually such a thing as separation. 
We became attached to the dream, made it real. We believe in guilt, and then we project it out to others as judgment, and we get stuck in the duality dream of extremes. So we learn to doubt the reality of this. The greatest lie we ever believed was that love could be withheld that love could be withheld from anyone, us or someone else. Love is who we are. Love cannot be denied. Well, one of my favorite movies, I know you know this, is Don Juan. Not just because Marlon Brando and Johnny Depp just happened to be in it. <laughs> this one's for you, Peggy. In the movie, Johnny Depp thinks he's Don Juan and he's in a psychiatric hospital. And Marlon Brando is his psychiatrist. Many of you have seen this movie. First, the, one of the greatest movie lines ever is when the psychiatrist says to, John, to Don Juan, played by Johnny Depp, what would you say if I told you that you were in a psychiatric hospital? And he answers, I'd say that person has a very limited and uncreative way of looking at things. <laughs> is that the greatest line ever? <laughs> so when you look at the world going on right now, we have a very limited and uncreative way of looking at the world, do we not? How limiting can we get? We could be creating something better and this is all we can come up with? Come on. It's time to imagine a better world. Jesus said it's already here. The kingdom of God is among you. We just don't see it because we're limited and uncreative in our thinking. There was a book I read a long time ago, The Transformational Quest by Reverend William Cameron. <clears throat> he talked about how the kingdom of God is right here, right now, but we keep putting it in the future. Oh, when we die, I'll get to heaven. Yeah. He said to the Jews and the Christians, the kingdom of heaven was always to come or something in the future. But to Jesus, the kingdom of God is at hand, an ever-present dimension of spirit and literally within all people at all times. It was his recurring theme that the kingdom of God is within you right here <coughs> and now. And that's why we come together every Sunday to remember that, to reignite that. And you know, back then, Jesus couldn't have picked a worse time to talk about this, to convince the Israelites. It was a time of corruption, persecution, suffering. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Has there ever been a time that wasn't about corruption, persecution, suffering? There will always be nightmares in this dream of separation. You can't be in a dream of separation and not have a nightmare. But the kingdom of God is beyond time and space. And imagination lays the tracks for the reality train to follow us there. Imagination then join with prayer. Now you've got two powerful forces working together. Imagination and prayer. Visioning that world, that higher world of love and oneness. Speaking the word of that in prayer. Meditating on the vision. Coming together collectively with other people increases the power. There is enough of love in this room right here, right now, to heal the world. If we can imagine the future is made in our image. What image do we have? Do we have an image of what's going on? Or what can be? What can be? And I know I've asked many times, when's this shift going to happen? <laughs> when is this shift going to happen? And somebody said it's like a dill pickle. And I bet you didn't expect me to say that. <laughs> it's like a dill pickle. At what point does a cucumber become a pickle? Anybody know at what point that cucumber is now a pickle? And we can look at humanity and say, at what point is this humanity going to transform into love and oneness? How much vinegar do we have to sit in before we find it? <coughs> I've got to get a drink of water. Okay. Sing, sing a song while I'm doing it. <laughs> Well, the board is going to meet tomorrow night. We've been planning a visioning session for a couple months now, and something has always come up that we've had to postpone it. But tomorrow night we're going to get together and vision the future of this church and what we'd like to have happen here. So you've got you know, 24 hours to contact a board member if you have a vision that you would like to be included 
in the vision, in our visioning. And we know that it takes time, it's all in divine order. I mean, back on the wall there, back by the desk, is a, yeah, Charlotte is showing it, it's a picture, the original vision of this church. Do you know that we're sitting in the fellowship hall? And that's the vision of the sanctuary that was never built. And you know what, it might take another 10, 20 years before it's built, who knows, but that vision still sits there. It's like everything, it takes time, time to ferment. And so we still hold the vision, knowing that everything's in divine order. But I don't know, for this world, I've got hope. I, I am an eternal optimist and I still have hope. And you know what really helped me? The royal wedding of Harry and Meghan. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not one of these people that had to see the wedding. I didn't watch it. And I'm not one of these people that reads all the magazines, although I did want to see what a wedding dress looked like. But <laughs> the thing that impressed me the most was she had this wonderful, um, this wonderful evangelical black minister that gave that message and that wonderful style, gave the most wonderful message on love at the wedding. And the exciting thing about it is that particular post of his message has been shared more than her wedding dress because the message was so powerful. And so what I'd like to do to close today is have you all shut your eyes if you're comfortable with doing that. And I'm just going to read you a small part of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, of course. But would you imagine with me his words now? And his name is... Oh, I had his name typed here somewhere. Now I can't find it. Okay, here it goes. Think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine our homes and families where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world where love is the way. When love is the way, I'm selfish and redemptive. When love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. When love is the way, there's plenty of good room, plenty of good room for all God's children. Because when love is the way, we actually treat each other well, like we're actually family. When love is the way, we know that God is the source of us all, and we are brothers and sisters, children of God. My brothers and sisters, there's a new heaven, a new earth, a new world, a new human family. When love is the way. And so let us take those words into our heart and let them ferment there. Until the world becomes that transformed state of the kingdom of heaven on earth and love reigns and peace and harmony and joy. We are one, one with each other, one with all life. We are divine, we are love by nature and we extend that to each other in grace. We say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ and so it is, so it truly is. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing Imagine. Let's sing the